Hello and welcome to the Varsity Sports Player of the Year special alongside Jason Andera. I am Jay Elson. Yeah, well, we've watched a lot of football, talked to a lot of players, uh, we asked a lot of coaches, and we came up with a list that has turned out to be a very elite list. So many good players to go through. But today we're going to focus on the best of the best from each class. Yep, we're going to move through all 11 classes between South Dakota and North Dakota, giving you the short list of candidates and the player of the year in each of those classes. So let's start, though, with South Dakota's smallest class. Work our way all the way up to the largest. So it is 9B that's up first, Jason. Uh, Lincoln Gibbs, certainly at the top of this list, not necessarily revealing that he's the guy just yet, but these numbers kind of speak for themselves. Well, yeah, he goes over 2,000 yards. He gets to play in all 12 games. That helps bump those numbers up, but just ridiculous. 37 times in the end zone, but a lot of other deserving candidates here. Reed Harder out of Cologne has done a great job being a dual-threat quarterback, doing a lot of it with his feet. Another guy that did that a lot, Grant Johnson. He was over 1,000 yards in both rushing and receiving. Really lifted Alcester Hudson from being a pretty average team to a very good team in his tenure. Chance Olsen, the quarterback at Langford, don't overlook what he did. And Scott Podzimek may have been the best passing quarterback we've seen at the entire nine-man level. Yeah, and, and of course, Langford and Hardy County faced off for the, for the championship. Langford dominated that football game uh, to win their first state title, and, and we kind of we – kind of probably figured this Lincoln Gibbs is in yeah. fact the 9B player of the year for varsity sports too hard to overlook what he's done and he does it on both sides of the ball defensively contributed for over 50 tackles I mean his coach Paul Roche said already as a junior people are looking at him in both North Dakota and South Dakota every school in that area has at least got their eyes on this guy for playing at the college level yeah and uh, as you said he's just a, they got a lot of guys a lot coming of guys back coming so back. Langford uh, set up to have a very successful season again in 2016 all right let's move into class 9a now Jason and uh, Gabe King from Irene Wakanda pretty good passing quarterback in his own right almost 2400 yards 34 touchdowns Jared Nielsen kind of paced that potent attack for Canastota, over 2,000 yards on the ground, nearly 300 yards receiving as well. He also brought six kicks back yeah. for touchdowns. What a year. Well, not all kicks. Some were on defense, but return touchdowns was six. Yeah, he did everything across the field. Uh, Gabe King and Scott Seffner, though, we have to mention, nine-man quarterbacks who can throw over 2,000 yards are pretty rare, and that's why they're kind of in this finalist group. Nielsen, though, he's the guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he did it all. He Offense, did. defense, special teams, the whole world. Exactly. And his coach, James Strang, said this is the kind of guy you want on your team. He gives 110%. He really sets the bar high for the rest of the group, and he does it both on and off the field. And this year on the field, it was pretty crazy, over 2,000 yards. Yep, so congratulations to Jared Nielsen, our, our 9A player of the year here on Varsity Sports. And 9 AA Jason, of course, uh, a lot of the attention uh, from a team standpoint all season, and, and deservedly so, went to – Woolsey Wessington and Woodstock at Wessington Spring Sandboard Central. Those two met for the 9AA title. Woolsey Wessington, of course, avenging the earlier loss uh, to the Blackhawks. Uh, and Hunter Johnson led the way for that, that team in that game. Uh, but it was him and, and Landon Oshner all year that really yeah. stood out in this club. Yeah, if you're talking about headliners, those are the two that you just can't deny, and they're definitely on this list. But so many other good players in 9AA. I felt 9AA was at their highest level in many years. Porter Cropsey, every time you'd look in the box score, the guys run for 300 yards or so a game. In just nine games, collected 2,300 yards in linemen. So, terrific effort by well, him. Yeah, you remember we handed out the varsity game balls all season. It oh, seemed yeah. like he was on that list. Oh, yeah. If he didn't get the game ball, he was on the honorable mention list every single week. Just yeah, and his, his coach, Kiefer, can't say enough great things about what he brought. But uh, Colton Dragset from Stanley County took a, that team from kind of an average year to a Final Four type of team, and he'll be back next year as well. And Chase Corton, another guy, just a junior for Bonham. I mean, we're talking about over uh, 1,800 total yards this year. Got the ball in the end zone 26 times. Does a little bit of everything for them. And uh, we talked about Hunter Johnson and Landon Oshner. Those guys were just blow for blow, two of the best players in this class. And the uh, number one guy in yeah. the end did 9 AA. Well, he showed it off at the, at the Dakota Dome. It was Hunter Johnson. I mean, this is two years in a row Hunter Johnson's been over 2,000 yards rushing. Who does that? Well, Hunter Johnson does. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Two, two years of just absolute dominance in this class. Well, congratulations to him, uh, our 9 AA Player of the Year for Varsity Sports, Hunter Johnson from Woolsey Westington. We are just getting started. We're going to unveil our 11-man Players of the Year from South Dakota when we come back. This is Varsity Sports. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network. 
is presented by Mitchell Technical Institute, Shields, and Farmers Union Insurance Agency. And welcome back to our Varsity Sports Player of the Year special for high school football. We've taken you through the nine-man ranks in South Dakota. Now we got to cover the four top players from the 11-man ranks starting in Class 11B. Jason, this list, by really no surprise, dominated by Winter Warriors. Yeah, Winter absolutely dominated this class all year, uh, and they dominate in the awards as well. And when we look at the short list, you look at guys like Windsor Berry and Riley Frazier, really hard to separate the two because they featured so many different backs in this offense, and they equally shouldered the load, and they equally had great seasons. And then on defense, I mean, this is what you talk about when you talk about Winter right. Warriors, is dominating defense. Eight shutouts on the year. Uh, who's the leader of that defense? It's a junior defensive lineman by the name of Crockett Krolikowski. Led the team in tackles from a defensive tackle spot. Led the team in sacks. Uh, he was right up there in tackles for a loss and even had a few pass breakups. So he's on the list. And then Bennett Shabazz and Braden Summers, a couple quarterbacks from the northeast part of the state. Terrific seasons for those guys, too. Uh, just didn't quite put up the, the big numbers that they need to kind of crack some of these winner warrior guys. Winner, in the end, kind of dominated this class yeah. and they, they showed it once and for all in the 11b title game handling tri-valley with with a relative ease no surprise here that crockett kurlikowski is in fact our player of the year he is the player of the year he's the best player on that defense and i i was tempted to give it to the entire defense because they yeah, play such been fair. a great unit but he's been the leader on defense and he's just a junior guys you don't combine that kind of power that kind of speed that kind of uh just football know-how that Crockett brought this year, and he's going to bring that again next year. Winner dominated in Class 11B. Madison for much of the year in Class 11A yeah. was the top team pretty much the entire way through. They stayed undefeated. They were tested, but they found ways to win each and every football game, and two of their leaders uh, highlight the list of candidates in Class 11A. Yeah, Mitch Hansen has had a couple great seasons in a row now. This year stayed healthy throughout the year. Great dual threat quarterback, obviously threw the ball for 2,200 yards, 25 touchdowns, but Brody Fredrickson dominated Dominated on the ground almost equally, over six yards to carry, 32 times in the end zone. Uh, and the rest of this group, you've got a couple other really good players. Keegan Van Egdom, I mean, he averaged eight yards per carry for a team that uh, he really vaulted into a state-level yeah. contender. And uh, Preston Arity, nobody put up numbers like Preston Arity this year, 65% on his completion ratio. You just don't do that in high school. Preston already did that. He's a junior as well. So a lot of good talent here. Hunter Hanley, another guy you got to throw into the mix as well. Great, great lineman for West Central. You kind of alluded to it, though. Uh, and Madison, you look at Mitch Hanson, you look at Brody Fredrickson. There was a number of guys. You could even throw Mason Layton yep, into that consideration could. as well. Heard a little different bit. guys that helped that team get to where they were. And, and each, each week, it seemed like a different guy they could depend on. Mm -hmm. At Sioux Falls Christian, however, Keegan Van Egdom, was the most important player to that team's success. Yeah. And for that reason, we're going to give him the nine. Yeah, he's not definitely not a one-man team. Got a lot of great guys around him. But when they needed big yards, a big game, they gave it to Keegan Van Egdom. And in the games against Madison, he outgained Brody Fredrickson head-to-head. -head. I know they're not playing each other head-to-head, -head, but he came up to uh, with a couple great performances in some of the biggest games of the year. So almost 2,000 yards on the ground, eight yards of carry. Tough not to give Keegan Van Egnum this award. And, and you even said you were surprised by just how much success Super Christian had. You yeah, expected them to be better, but not to the level they were yeah, at. Yeah, I thought year. I thought with the schedule they had, a lot of playoff teams. I know there were a lot of 11B teams they played, but a lot of playoff 11B teams, they really went above and beyond this year, and a lot of it due to what Keegan Van Egnum brought. Absolutely. Uh, all right, let's move into Class 11 AA now and, and some very talented individuals uh, in this group. We knew that coming into the season. You, you look at Tanner Frick, Brevin Kaiser, Gerald Maxwell, Kanan, Cannon Nelson, all, all of them very talented, seem to all really have a bright future in front of them if they choose to, to continue their careers at the collegiate level. Uh, but, you, you know, you, you look at the list for Tanner Frick, ends up as a state champion. He really, though, came on toward the end of the season uh, as that as the Bucks kind of figured things yeah. out at, around the halfway point. Oh, if you're just comparing numbers, just comparing stats, Tanner Frick probably not quite on the same level of, as the rest of this list, but his heart, his determination, all of that, those intangibles really helped Yankton to get to where they are. But as far as the rest of this list, I mean, Cannon Nelson and Brevin Kaiser, very razor thin uh, between their talent level. I'm sure if they switch teams, I mean, you might have the same results. They're that close. But in the end, I think Brevin Kaiser was the guy who made the difference in this class. Yeah, I think he was the 
most people would say he was the best player individually in this class for, from preseason all the way through the end of the season. Uh, and I think it showed even in the title game with, when Coach Papaga decided, hey, I'm going to put it in the hands of my quarterback. I got the best guy. Try and stop it. Unfortunately for the Governors, Yankton did, did stop it, but that doesn't stop us from saying, hey, Brevin Kaiser, you're the player of the year in 11 AA. Whether you're asking him to run uh, one of the prettiest balls that anybody threw in the class or on defense making a couple of uh, pick sixes, I mean, he did it all this year. All right, let's move it into Class 11 AAA now, our final Class of 7 in the state of South Dakota, and uh, uh, a little less traditional on the you know, on this list. Not often are you going to see an offensive lineman, but Matt Farniak is a, is a special talent. Oh, he belongs on this list for sure. And then you've got the quarterbacks, Luke Fritch and Jack Skelhaus, both impressive numbers. It's hard to gauge just with their numbers what kind of leadership they brought. And then Andrew Sorensen. As far as a defensive player, I don't know if I've seen a better defensive player than he has been over the last couple years, especially this senior season. He was dominant. All right, so in the end, though, uh, you consider the quarterbacks, which are always significant, especially as you get into the big school classes. Well, really any class, yep. but uh, you like Fardiak a little bit better. I, I think he's pretty obviously the best player every time he walks onto the field. And, and what he brought for leadership, I mean, he made that line an entire unit and he did it with his uh, with his knowledge, with his athleticism, with his leadership. And uh, it's hard to gauge because he don't have the stats there to back it up. But a guy who made the uh, U.S. Army All-American team, yeah, I mean, no that joke. doesn't happen very often yep. in, in South Dakota. He is definitely the best player in this And state. he is the third member of that family that's going to go on to play big-time college football on an offensive line. That is a grocery bill I would not that's want right. to deal with. But, he deserves uh, it. He deserves it, certainly, as, as do the rest of our honorees for Player of the Year in the state of South Dakota. All right, well, Levi Cudmore played a huge part in Park, Park River Ford Bill Lankins run to a second consecutive Class A crown this season, but... Was it enough to earn him our top individual award? We'll let you know right after this. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Mitchell Technical Institute, Shields, and Farmers Union Insurance Agency. And welcome back to Varsity Sports. We move our Player of the Year discussion a bit north now to the state of North Dakota. We've got four classes to consider. We're going to start nine-man, move all the way up to AAA. Uh, a lot of guys that that deserve a look in nine-man, yeah. Jason. And part of the reason is the fact that North Dakota does it differently. There aren't three classes to, right. to divvy it up. A lot of so teams. A lot of teams all packed into one. And, and you've got four on the screen here that that certainly seem to be a cut above the rest. Yeah, Jake Elin almost goes for 2,000 yards. He really, really got keyed on in that championship game, so didn't have his best game there. But trust me, a great season. Zach Martin did everything for Shiloh Christian this year. Tough schedule, got through it with a great quarterback. Kyler Melby from Kenmere Bowbell. We didn't see him very much this year, but look at that, over 2,000 yards passing produced 40 touchdowns on the year. Jalen Pfeiffer, we really got to know by watching him in the championship yeah. game, an excellent, excellent quarterback. And Kaylee Schwab, I mean, we're talking about a team in Thompson that spent most of the year at number one because of their quarterback. Uh, Kaylee, or excuse me, Jalen Pfeiffer was one that oh, also yeah. that we didn't know a lot coming in just because of where we North Prairie numbers. is at. Yeah, yeah, we saw the numbers, but to be able to see him on the field and see what Terrific. he could do against a very good Richland team was certainly... Uh, impressive. Uh, all of these guys certainly deserve heavy consideration, but in the end, I think you got it right. I think it's Jake Elin from yeah. Richland as they just powered through an incredibly difficult playoff road to get to the championship yeah. game, and then they had everything they could handle from North Prairie as well, and they came out on top, and yeah, he I think Elin stands out. Terrific year for the junior. He'll be back next year as well. We've been talking about a lot of juniors, and and he's definitely a leader on next year's list as well. All right, let's move it to Class A now. Park River Fordville Lankin wins its second straight Class A crowd. Uh, a couple of guys on this list that really contributed to that. One of them, Levi Cudmore, who did it both through the air and on the ground. Another one of these dual-thread quarterbacks yeah. that are so incredibly valuable at the high school level. And he saved his best for last in the championship game. Had a terrific championship game. His teammate, Caden Hunter, also 1,400 yards on the ground this year. you got to mention him. And then Carrington had a great team throughout the season. Their quarterback, Connor Wendell, the numbers don't really show it again, but great intangibles he brought to the field this year. So who is it? Who do you like the best out of this I group? think you got to go with Cudmore and somebody off of Park River, that's for sure. They had such an electric season, and Cudmore did it. Like you said, both sides of the ball, both sides running and passing, led this team to just an unprecedented dominating season. Absolutely. Park River, uh, Ford Bill Lincoln, two-time uh, defending state champs in Class A. Remember, they hadn't won it in uh, like 100, 100 years, years going into last season, and so they got back-to-back -to, -back to celebrate now. 
All right, well, nine down, two to go. We'll round out our little awards ceremony by crowding the top players from Class AA and AAA next. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Mitchell Technical Institute, Shields, and Farmers Union Insurance Agency. And welcome back to Varsity Sports. Again, alongside Jason Andera, I am Jay Elson. Well, we round out our Player of the Year discussion in North Dakota's two biggest classes. Yeah. Jason, let's look at players. AA now. Here's a look at your list of contenders. Beulah, Casey Walker, a state champ for the first time since 1989, are the Miners. Uh, he certainly led the way for that team. Yeah, he did a great job for them. Just, again, showing that leadership throughout the season. You see a couple quarterbacks on this list. Walker and Carson Zarek. Zarek. When you talk about dual threat quarterbacks in, in North Dakota, this guy heads the list. He does it so well. 1,000 on the ground, 2,000 through the air. And then you got a couple of workhorse running backs. Matt Bird, 270 carries in one wow. season. Ridiculous. Just a, a true workhorse. And then Jake Heinert, again, did the same thing. Really shouldered the load for St. Mary's throughout the year. You said Walker's the state champion uh, uh, among this group, but he is not the player of the year. Just the numbers were too overwhelming for Carson Zarek. 1,000 yards, as I said, with 20 touchdowns. So he got the goal line yards. He got the big first downs. He could throw it throughout the uh, air and distribute it to the rest of the team. Fantastic year for Zarek and the Wapakoneta Huskies. In class AAA, Minot and Century played for the state title, and it was an epic game yeah. that Century rallied past Minot to get to win their first state title. And a couple of guys from that team, part of your list of candidates for yeah. player of the year in AAA. Everybody's talking about the Feeney-Geiger connection. It wasn't just in the championship game. The whole second half of the season, it was palpable how well these two were connecting. And then you got, again, another great quarterback in Ben Belinsky. His numbers, percentage-wise, right there with the best in the state. And then a couple of workhorse running backs again. J Jackson Ford, 1,700 yards. Tyler Harris, under 100 for the first game, was over 100 the rest of the season and just gained steam. Another junior on the list. And Chase Tyken, he did great too. He had Genova take a few carries away from him late in the year. But what he did offensively, touchdown-wise, and defensively, just a true stud for West Fargo. Dalton Feeney, the AAA Player of the Year in the state of North Dakota. This had to have been extremely difficult for you to yeah. settle on one or the other between him and Geiger. Well, uh, but Feeney made a huge difference. So you look at when that season turned around, it's when he came back into the line. Right. The only thing you could take away from Feeney is he only played eight games, but they won the games that he played in. It was pretty evident he was the best football player in the field every time he stepped across the line. Remember the first time they played Monarch, they lost 35-7. to yeah. He was not a part of that game. He came back, and of course, they get the win in the championship The game. best. All right, well, during the course of the high school football season, our varsity sports cameras captured some incredible plays in both North and South Dakota. We're going to wrap things up with a look back at the best of the best next. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Mitchell Technical Institute, Shields, and Farmers Union Insurance Agency. But before we go, we do want to share some of the top moments from this high school football season. Yeah, I've been waiting all season to compile some of the best, and uh, we probably left some on the clipping room floor. Oh, yeah. But, however, we are putting an extended version online, so go to midcosn.com, click on video. You can see all the plays and maybe disagree with us a little bit. But here's what we picked for our top ten plays of the year. Yeah, let's get into it. Mitch Hansen from Madison looking for his junior wideout, Mason Layton. Oh, what boy. did he just do? This is not the first time this year, folks, that this guy's called in a one-handed reception. Just one hand, never breaks stride. Big gain down the middle. Madison rallies past who falls Christian in overtime. Here's Aberdeen Central quarterback Gabe Swanson looking for Mason Trapp. It's off Nick Walker. Look who makes the diving grab at the goal line. That's Luke Fritch. Yeah, Luke Fritch doesn't play a lot of defense, but when he does, he makes it count. Richland's Blake Loomis returning a kick here, but Hankinson's Daniel Rounds rips it away. He's going to go the other way for six. Oh, I love that play. That's, that's just... A determination there, ripping it away and making the run. He he didn't quite make the end zone though. First game of the year, number seven, St. Mary's quarterback Colt Gendrew by some time. Decides, oh, I'm gonna throw it downfield anyway. Noah Cop is there in the run after the catch. Makes it even more special. Oh, yeah. Breaks it loose. 51 yard touchdown. What makes these plays of the year are multiple elements of great plays. Great scramble in the backfield, great twist to get away from three different Shanley Deacons. Awesome play to start the year. West Fargo gets the block deep in the Davies. Look at the big fella. 
picking it up. Brandon Metz tightropes the sideline for the scoop and score. Yeah, who says big guys don't have some agility? Look at those feet just inside the pylon. Great job by Brandon Metz. Well done. Number five, Dickinson receiver Michael McChesney. Great run to the end zone here, but he coughs it up just shy of the goal line. Fortunately for him, he's got the presence oh. of mind to snag it out of midair. Yeah, Still he gets the touchdown. Dragged a couple demons in and finished what he started. Hey, uh, Gerald Maxwell's coming. What? Oh, what? there he is. Yeah, As if from nowhere. <laughs> Look at that. There he is. He pops up, and he's about, oh, I don't know, eight feet in the air. Scored That's crazy. Scored touchdowns this year for Brooklyn's championship game. Now nine-man North Dakota ranks tied at 38. Brady Hyde picks up the bad snap, finds Cooper Lane. He shovels it back to Trevor Fla. The old hook and ladder wow. to decide a state championship. Again, multiple things. The, the quarterback Hyde to get away from the pressure. To make the reception, it's so fluid, and it was a, a game-winning touchdown. It ended up being a game-winning touchdown for the championship. Number two, AAA championship in South Dakota. Ty Smith takes oh, it boy. away from Antonio Cassiello. Oh, boy, Cassiello, look at this. He has two hands on the ball. Smith rips it away. First lead of the game for Washington. I don't know. Maybe that was the best play I've seen all year. It's pretty maybe, close. Maybe it was. This one was awfully good, too, though. Fourth and 13. Dalton Feeney looking for Adam Geiger. He did what? He did One it. One-handed stab. Sentry rallies past Mata to win the AAA championship, their first state oh, title. Boy, look at that. And Geiger helps him get it done. What a catch. Just ridiculous. That one, of course, ended up. Uh, getting viral a little bit, so that was yeah. good for him. And uh, good enough for Sports Center, good enough for Varsity Sports. Exactly. All right. Well, that's a look at our top ten plays from 2015. As Jason said, head uh, head online and, and check out the rest of this bunch more that were worth uh, consideration, yes. certainly for this list. But uh, these are the ten we felt were the best of the best from this season. For Jason Adara, I'm Jay Ellis. Remember to bring it back here this winter, all winter long, and to talk high school hoops starting in December.